Hello, welcome to Beyond the Boundary. This is the grand final show of news and views. Cannot wait. There's absolutely plenty to get through. Nick, I'm all right. How are you, mate? It's been a long time coming, Josh. Cannot wait for it. It's been a long season, but the uh, finale is finally here. Vinay, how are you, buddy? We got here. We got here, Josh, and that's the important thing. Absolutely. Boys, let's kick it off with a quick discussion of the prelims. Uh, yeah, what do we think of it? Um, Sydney, pretty comprehensive over North Melbourne. Yeah, North Melbourne's prelim finals haven't been absolutely great in recent history. Um, but they, they, gave, they gave a fight and uh, got a lot further than many thought they would. But uh, credit to them and credit to Sydney, obviously, uh, did it in commanding fashion. What do you think of that? Yeah, look, I thought, um, you know, North and Port, they were always going in as the, as the... A lot of people looked at it as though, you know, they're lucky to have gotten this far. It should yeah. be easy wins, but... Port in particular were ex- exceptional. North, I think, they were just the victims of two tired weeks. Two yeah. tired weeks. Well, Hawthorne, Port Adelaide, that was one of the games of the season. It certainly was. That was phenomenal. Hawthorne managed to hang on just in oh, the end. Oh, that was ridiculous. 30-point yeah. uh, comeback or something? <laughs> well, Port, when they came back to within four points, yeah. Yeah. I said, if they win this, I'll never watch a game of AFL again. <laughs> <laughs> because I'll never see anything more impressive than this, ever. Yeah. So there's yeah. no point for me to win. Well it, it, it was a phenomenal game. And I mean, Jared Ruffhead, he's quickly becoming my favourite player in the competition. Uh, oh. Creeping up over to... <laughs> Towards Stevie J. <laughs> I mean, the big rough. I, I'm dead serious when I say this. Eyebrow cam. Eyebrow cam. <laughs> I'm dead serious when I say this. Yep. I would pay the same amount of money for Ruffhead as Sydney are paying for Buddy. Ooh. I no, but you, you've already got Ruffhead. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. No, he's, he's kidding, certainly yeah. becoming um, vitally important to that whole thing. Well, when you, can you kick six goals in yeah. a game that, that was that close? And he plays through the midfield as well. And he kicks them on oh, the run. Yeah, he yeah. is a phenomenal he footballer. Is, yeah. Yeah. Probably the most important uh, player at Hawthorne, you'd say. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree. I'd oh, agree. Yeah. Anyway, the first topic of the week is Brenton Sanderson. And he's been absolutely blindsided, as in his own words, by the Adelaide Football Club. Yeah, well, rumours were that there were talks happening uh, for a couple of weeks now. But um, it's only just come to the surface the day he was sacked. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was a bit of a shock when I first heard about it a few weeks ago. But um, I can see the reasons behind it. Yep. Uh, see the direction the board wants to go. Uh, it's a bit harsh on Sanderson, maybe. He did get them into a prelim in their first final. Uh, first year, sorry. Yep. Uh, they were only kick away from a grand final. So, But uh, with the list they've got, I, I feel it's a very talented list. And they missed the finals the last two years. So... I uh, consider the direction they're heading. Having said that, he has the greatest win loss record yeah, of any does. Adelaide. Coach. I cannot agree with the um, what Adelaide have done. I can't agree with it, and I think it showed that Patrick Dangerfield was very annoyed on the uh, on, on the footy show. I think it was. Yeah. He wasn't very pleased about it. Yeah. I think it was just a stupid decision, to be honest. Like I know Mark Rusciuto, people don't know this, but he's on the board of the Adelaide Football Club. Yeah. And he had a big say. Well, he looks like he's pulling along as well. Well, yeah, he had a big say in Sanderson. I just think it's completely ridiculous. Well, I'll, I'll completely have, ridiculous. I wouldn't, have a pro- I wouldn't have a problem with it if they had someone already lined up uh, with experience. Something like Fred Randall did, which was wrong, in my opinion, to sharp back Mark Harvey yeah. the way they did. Well, well, that's a really good comparison. Uh, Mark Harvey felt he was doing well with Fred Randall. He felt the team was on the up and he was the man to take them there. And Fred Randall had then... You know, found the man who they obviously thought was better and just won something. I don't have done the exact same thing, except they don't have that man lined up. They, well, it's it's almost a slap in the face to Sando. It's basically saying that, you know, we, 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 actually, we would like to take our chances. Yeah, just finding, finding a coach. We're, we're quite confident that we'll be able to just randomly find someone better than you. Yeah. yeah. Just off the cuff, which is ridiculous. Their last, you know, the back end of that season was excellent. And just using West Coast as kind of like a comparison, because you look at West Coast, they had similar ish seasons. Yeah, both of them came storming over the second half and almost made finals. Yeah. And, you know, the way West Coast looked at it was that, you know, we did really well in those last few games and yeah. we showed something. We and build on that for the next and, season. And yeah. Exactly. And Adam Simpson extended his contract by a year. Yeah. Then you've got Adelaide looking at it the exact other way, going that we didn't make finals, let's just sack this guy. You know, he's taken his team so far. It was, it was really bad because I think Brody Smith has blossomed. Under Brenton Sanderson. Yeah, Daniel Tyler as well. Daniel Tyler's Tyler. gone on. Rory Sloan, Rory Sloan has yeah. taken that next step under Brenton Sanderson. He's brought Eddie Benson in a club who's kicked 50 goals plus. He he was, even game. Paddy Dangerfield, to an extent. Yeah. Yeah. Last year he was in blistering form. And even this year. Sam Jacobs. Been, Sam Jacobs. You know, all these players that have been extremely good under him, that have just come out into their own, it almost seems a bit, you know, it just seems as though, you know, they've used him. Like, you've now yeah. developed all our good players. We don't need you anymore. Out you go. I honestly, I've lost a lot of respect for Mark Rashida from that. I just think it was a very... Well, I, think it's, I think it's a very ballsy decision. Um, we're going to see, in 12 months' time, they're either going to look very, very silly, 
or we might have seen a slight improvement or even a dramatic improvement from that side, and we'll go, you know, maybe that was the right decision. Obviously, Brendan Sanderson is on the wrong end of this, and, you know, that's it's hard for him to take, but if this works out for the Adelaide Football Club, then they made a very brave, brave move, and well done from them. I think it's really... Another edge, another one. Another yeah, one, yeah. really dominated this I year. think it's really, really harsh now that I think about it, because when uh, you took them to a point in their first year, Correct. then he's lost Kurt Tippett through salary cap reasons. Then he's had draft selections taken away from him. Yeah. He's had his CEO who runs the whole club suspended for six months, I think it was. Then he's had his right hand man, Dean Bailey, unfortunately pass away to cancer. Yeah. And he's had injuries uh, this year and last. In in this period of time when he's been a coach, he's been club, very they have so much bad luck. You, you look at the club, the after Essendon, the club has been going through the most often. Yeah, 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 definitely. It's definitely the Adelaide yeah, group. Yeah. But you don't hear about it much. But he handled it all really well. I thought he was an, a, a, you know, a profession. You know, he, he never had any outbursts or anything silly in the media, the kind of year with Nick Moldhouse or, you know, Al Clarkson. It was just a professional all around. I think that's why it stung Paddy Dangerfield. Yeah. yeah. That they booed him so callously. So, you know, without warning, without. But credit to Sando for how professionally he handled it. He'll, he, get, he'll get picked up. Oh, he should. Sure. He must. For sure. And, yeah, yeah like, he must. And f- Sorry, Al. Well, we. I was just going to mention, there's a couple of other clubs who coaches possibly on shaky ground. Um, Rumours that Guy McKenna at Gold yeah, Coast might be there. Um, and Brent McCartney at the sort of Western Bulldogs. I so love Guy McKenna's a bit of a humorous situation, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Because when Abel was in that team, you yeah. were thinking, this man is a great coach. He's taking a developing young side, yeah. and he's lo- looking like he's going to put them into a final series very soon. Yeah. You take Abel out of that side, and they're like, oh, that doesn't work very well. It looks almost as though Abel's coaching that side more than McKenna. Absolutely. Boys, before we move on, uh, give us two names who you think might take the Adelaide coaching job. Um, well, Stewie Drew is one that's um, supposedly the front runner there. Yep. Yep. The name? Yeah. Uh, 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 I'd like I know Peter Sumich is one that I think may. Because Peter Sumich has been, he's the Fremantle assistant coach, I believe. Yeah. Uh, no, backline coach, I think it is yeah. one of them. And he has been looking for a full-time coaching position, main coaching role for a while. Yeah. He didn't get the West Coast one, um, so I think he'll be... Even, even a guy like maybe a Cameron Ling. I know he's ruled, oh, out. No. I know he's ruled out for next year, um, but someone like that who, who supports... I love him, is... but I can't bear to watch he, your... He has, he has signed on to you, the other channel, Oh, he has signed on, so okay. definitely not going to happen. I'll, yeah. I'll give you three names. Three? Three. Nathan Bassett? Yeah. Is former, that, former Crow. Former Crow has done a great apprenticeship. Uh, he's only been in the AFL system once, but he's coached Norwood uh, for a number of years. And Norwood's good side. Took him to a premiership, won a yeah. flag today. So Overseen great. guys like Matty Crouch and uh, James Age. And Norwood. Uh, another one is, I would be very surprised if he wasn't even looked at, and that's Lee Tudor at North Melbourne. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. got a very, very good record as assistant coach. Yeah. Yeah. Was he a long He's had premierships and runners up the entire time he's been an assistant he, he's, coach. He's been in you know, finals appearance uh, for the last 10 years as an assistant well, Where was he at? He was at Geelong, wasn't he? He was at North Melbourne this year. They got okay. the And previously? Last year he was at Sydney. Yeah. Uh, Bit of a journey, was not pro- They got to a program again. Yeah. Uh, 2012, he was at Sydney. They were in a grand final. The other one I'm hearing is John Westfold. Okay. No, that's, I can. That's from I, it. I'm surprised to hear. I right can now. guarantee you right now on this show, beyond any well, reasonable doubt, they cannot do this and bring someone new no. in. Otherwise, they must have kept. They would have kept. Well, John Worsfold will not coach. I can guarantee you that. They said that about Mike Thompson. West Coast would not name their best and fairest medal after him unless they were certain that he would never be associated with any other club. Unless yeah. they were absolutely certain about that, and you guys can see the reason behind that. It's yeah, it's right. It just doesn't seem logical to name your greatest prize after someone if they're just going to go and take a coaching role next year. Yeah, that's true. Hey, anyway, right, boys, moving on. Now we're going to have a chat about everyone's favourite topic. It's Essendon and the Asada findings. Josh, what do you reckon? <laughs> do we have to? I well, think we do cer- have to. It's certainly Damien Barrett's favourite topic. <laughs> I can tell you that much. Um. Boys, it's it was uh, a twenty goal pounding yeah. on Friday in the. Uh, can, can we first clarify what this court case was about and what is, what what stage we are now at the, after this? And that is what we're talking case. about because I know you probably all are bored to death about the Essendon yeah. saga, and we're not just talking about it because we're searching for topics to speak. But about, I think but there's c- some confusion about there this is, and that is why we're touching on what to, this means. to clear the to clear the fog. This yeah. is about the legality of. Um, the AFL and Asada joint invest- investigation. Correct. So this court case is more about Asada than it is about Essendon and their what correct. they've done. Yeah. Yes. Correct. So Essendon has taken them to court, uh, feeling that it's been unlawful that the AFL and Asada joint investigation. 
Um, and also certain investigation methods they've used, the yeah. way they've gone about it. Yeah. yeah. So this has nothing to do with what Essendon took. Uh, they're not guilty of what they took yeah. and stuff like that. That's still to come. But this is just about the legality of the joint investigation. To give you a timeline, basically, Asada started an investigation. AFL yeah. got involved. Essendon halted it all and said, hang on, we don't like the way that you're doing this. Took it to the federal court. Federal court has now said, no, they're doing it fine, carry on. And yeah. now we will continue the investigation. That's what's so, right. now, so now the Bombers have got 21 days to appeal. October 1st, I believe, is the, the deadline. deadline. Day. Yep. So I... Uh, Knowing the reasons that Justice Middleton gave, yeah. I could make a probably a preliminary hypothesis that Essendon will not be appealing because he shut down almost every single yeah. claim Essendon made. Well, I've heard the other way around. All right, well, it'll be very interesting. I I think if Essendon do appeal, they're, well, they're going to be in a bit of trouble if they Yeah, I've heard it's already... very unlikely they've got any chances. Correct. They're also, they're also very, you know, down in the hole in terms of money yeah. because they've got to pay costs now for this federal court case. I'll yeah. tell you right now, you both know how passionate I am about my club. We do. Yes. Yep. But if we appeal, it's the most stupidest thing ever. Yeah. I, well, I agree. I mean, listening to Justice Milton's, you know, uh, well, in legal terms, it's the ratio decidendi, which is the reasoning <laughs> for his decision. Legal man over here. The, the reasoning for his decision... There was nothing in Essendon's favour. Absolutely nothing. I mean, as, as I said, it was a 20 goal pound. Oh, yeah. I mean, Essendon actually, you know, m- meagerly, uh, you know, proposed the argument that, well, well, at least we came to Asada and said, can you please investigate us? This is, you know what I mean? They said, you should, you should be a little bit kinder to us because we, you know, we self incriminated. Would it be fair to say that they were clutching at straws to try and just find something? Th- to that's what they were doing, but it was just, you know, you, we'd probably say, yeah, you can have that. I mean, you know, when you look at it at the face value, you think, yeah, all right, Essendon did actually, you know, they were honest and they went up and... But even that, Justice Middleton said, no, that's not... He said, contractually, you're obligated to do that. If you're doing something wrong, you need to tell the Asada in the AFL. Yeah. So you haven't done anything, you know, um, good Samaritan-like there. Yeah. Boys, in terms of on-field uh, ramifications, uh, Paddy Ryder looks like he's uh, almost 100% gone. I think he's gone, yeah. Um, you may as well just say he's gone. Yeah. When, when I heard that news on Friday night, I was completely shattered, to yeah. be honest, because Understandably. he's... Uh, I will go as far as say I'm the most important, important player. player. He's, just to say it. he's the Joel Salwood, he's the Scott Pendlebury of your club. And people will say, oh, Dyson Apple, Joe Watson. No, Paddy Ryder is our first right. You, you don't realize he's our yeah. best forward, he's our best marking forward, and he's our most versatile big man. You don't realize how good he is until you take him out of that team. Yeah. I think we're all about to see that because he does so much as a Ruckman, he's so mobile, and oh, oh he, he's. He averages probably a goal a game. Yep. He's a very good mark. Well, he kicked, he took, kicked uh, 20 goals this year from 21 games. So. Yeah, and he's a very mobile midfielder. He r- gets around the ground much easier than a lot of the other and mids. He, and he's quick for a big guy. He's, well. Oh, he's very quick. He's well, very he doesn't have a lot of muscle on him. No. He's a fr- stringy kind of character, but he's... He's, he's, got, he's, got, a, he's got a massive leap on him as well. And, and he's a severely underrated tap ruckman. He is. And severely and underrated. I, I just cannot imagine uh, Essendon without him, to be honest, but... Unfortunately, come round one next year, we're going to Looks see. Looks like him. that's the reality. Yeah. But oh, um, I mean. let let me get let me get this straight. I just said to you how passionate I am about this club. Yep. When players start to leave because of this investigation, it, you know something's not. The soup's not right. No, it's not been cooked correctly. No. And <laughs> I'm sorry, a lot of bomber fans won't agree with me, but James Hurd has to go. Oh, the bomb has been dropped. Well, I think one way of looking at this is this is a long drawn out thing that is a lot of people's fault, and it's not just. Sack the CEO, sack the coach, sack the this, sack the that. <laughs> yeah. Um, Throw the sack at anything that moves, pretty much. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, possibly it's the right thing to do to just have a clean slate I, and I, sack I, everyone I, involved with it. I think know. we need if we if we're gonna have a fresh start. Yeah. He needs to go. Well, I think it's down to the players more than anyone else. I think if the players forgive him and the players are willing to play under him, that's all that matters. If they don't, if there's even one player in that side that doesn't completely absolve James Hurd. And say I'm willing to accept this guy as my coach. I think he's the one to take us forward. Yeah. Then they have to get. They can't have him. Yeah. Well, Be- Paddy Ryder is that one man. But he's leaving the club. I'm saying because, if there's because of the investigation. Uh, we don't know that for certain. It could also be a mixture of the fact that his wife is from the Sunshine Coast. Maybe he just wants to change the scenery. But yeah. What I'm saying is that there needs to be everyone in that club needs to have their weight behind James Hurd. Otherwise, there is no this, point. Yeah, this can't all. this can't continue to be a, a fans not liking him. You know, exactly. board not liking him. Yep. Some people like him, some people not. This needs to be full support. Move on, well, because he's been the face of this whole thing. It's always yeah. been heard. Well, I have to say that Paddy Ryder. People cannot underestimate how big his loss is again, because 
He, it's essentially as though, you know, Geelong losing someone like a Joel Selwood. Yeah. yeah. That's how important he is to the club. You may think, no, that's Joe Watson or Dyson Heppel. Dyson Heppel's an excellent footballer, but, you know, he's only actually really come into it the last couple of years. Barada has been solid for as long as I can we, remember. We, what we're talking about here is the structure of the side. Yeah. Yep. Paddy Ryder is the core of the structure of the side. And they don't have anyone that is readily as capable as him in the right. No. Now, Simon so Goodwin, boys, he's yep. got the assistant job at Melbourne. They finally got their man. Uh, he's going to have two years as senior assistant under Paul Roos, yep. uh, a bit of a longer apprenticeship. Okay. And then he's going to have a three-year uh, deal as the senior coach. Oh, really? Yep. So this is a bit of a... We think or we know? We know. So he signed definitely five, five he's signed on, yep. So this is a bit of a Nathan Buckley, Nick Malthouse kind of arrangement yep. um, where there's the senior coach who's obviously done this for many, many years who's going to be sort of the mentor in this and sort of transition into the, the young up-and-coming coach. Absolutely. Well, Simon Goodwin had uh, an interview with Paul Roos uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yep. And Paul Roos said as soon as he left the room, he knew that he wanted Simon Goodwin. Oh, so, wow. Okay. Yep. Uh, he's obviously made some form of impression on Paul Roos. So uh, being at the Bombers the last couple of years, he's been in, uh, in control of our midfield uh, and done a pretty good job. We've seen the development of Dyson Heppel, David Myers while he's been there. So uh, I'm right for him to get the job. I think he's ready for a senior job. But um, he's going to have another two years under Paul Roos. Get a good feel of the list, build his relationships, um, and take it from there. Dude, yeah, that'd be pretty, pretty. You'd be pretty happy if you're some good one. I mean, you'd feel very secure, wouldn't you? I mean, yeah. you'd be locked into a good job, yeah. two year contract, uh, albeit at Melbourne, um, and then you're going to get a chance as a senior coach. Yeah. So he's got a very, you know, kind and of good future. On on the club specifically, um, not so much about Simon Goodwin, but Melbourne have always. It's always been sacked a coach, got a new one. Sacked a coach, got a new true. one. We've had so many failure new coaches well, there. But now it's going to be, you know, proven senior coach, one of the best coaches in the AFL, transition, take under the wing, whichever way you want to put it, into new coach. They haven't done it this way before. And I think this is the smartest possible way to do it. Yes. Yeah. Finally, a, a coach is going to be coming into... Well, he's not going to be coming in. He's already going to be there. It's going to be an environment he knows. He, he has the trust of the players. He knows the game style. It's not just quickly changing to a new coach who has this new vision of how the club will go. Well, that, that's that's the thing with Goody. He's going to come in, be that assistant coach, and he's going to know the list. I don't think it'll make a difference for Melbourne because what I'm telling you is that the coach is not the issue with that club. They've tried at least four different coaches. But they've and got... They, well, they've, they've had got Mark all... Neal. They've had Dean Bailey. Yep. Yeah. They've had who was who was before that? Um, no, I Neil, Neil Craig was in there as well. Neil Craig, but they've had all these. And they also had yes. They've had all these problems, but one of the biggest ones has been Pause. the fact that they can't get any form of stability. Well, and the problem was with the players. I mean, Josh has mentioned a few times. There are players in that team that should not be playing AFL. Yeah, but simple as that. Pu- putting that aside, focusing on the coaching problem, you're now removing this problem of having a brand new coach who's never met any of these players or whatever coming That's in. That's true. That's now one problem they've solved. They can focus That's on true. other problems to do with the football club. That's my but point here. That, that's one very minuscule problem. How, how, however, I have said this year that the players that Paul Roos have brought in have been very, very good. Dom, Correct. Dom Tyson, Bernie Vince. Viv Mitchie's shown some uh, shown some form. Christian Salem's going to be a very very good footballer. Yeah. Uh, there's a few others there that he's bought he bought in last year that are very very good. I can't remember off the top of my head. I apologise. Yeah. Cam Pedersen perhaps or was that the year before? No, that was the year before. Okay. Before. But they have been very very good. So you can see a little bit of transition. They did fall off towards the end of the year. Aiden Riley's another one. Yeah, Aiden Riley. At the start of the year, we saw that improvement. Um, but they are still a young side. But I still maintain there's more than half those uh, players on that list aren't up to AFL. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you look at watch the, some of those players play and you think, what are they doing? I mean... Well, we'll, we'll get a good indication of the development at Melbourne uh, in next year. The start of next year. It was never, this was never going to be a quick fix. We when, focused when on that we, the When will we know when the compensation pick decision will be announced? After fr- uh, free agency, I think. Free agency. So it'll be a while then. Yeah. yeah. But... Okay. The, the point I was trying to make was we'll see the development of Melbourne and the development of someone else when Sam Blees goes to his new club. Yeah. Because Sam Blees is a very, a very good footballer. He is a he very is good, good footballer. Football. He's requested a trade. Has he? He has. So we'll see the development of him if it's a personal mm. problem yep. or is it the problem? A club problem. problem. Well, if he, if he comes out and blooms and blossoms and becomes a great footballer, the yeah. answer is blindingly obvious. Yeah. Uh, and I'm almost certain that that is the case. Yeah. Um, because there just can't be the, all these subpar footballs all in the just same Just happen to a yeah. all. Yeah, I mean, the, the probability of that is so unlikely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just, it's, 
It's too unlikely. Well, for Melbourne's sake, let's hope that Simon Goodwin can finally be the fix to this problem and uh, just solve one of the things going wrong at Melbourne Football Club. Absolutely, boys. Just one. That brings us to the end of the final edition of News and Views. The grand final the edition. The grand final edition, the last one of the year. Um, we started this show later off in the year. Correct. Yeah, we did. Yep. I think it's we kind, of, kind of taken off, really. I really enjoyed it. It's generated yeah, a lot of interest, yeah. I'll, yeah. Get, I'll give you a bit of credit. You came up with it. I knocked oh, the back at first. But, uh, you, you <laughs> came it, only took, it only took about, uh, about 14 weeks ago. 15 or 16 times trying to get you there. (laughs) Anyway, um, make sure you check out the grand final preview, our last match preview of the year. There's a link to that at the end. And we will be back for another show next week. Um, That'll be the grand final review. Grand final season review. Yeah, and we'll also go through our season predictions and stuff and have a bit of a conclusion on there, see who's fared the best. I don't actually know at this stage. And then we're into one of my favourite parts of the the, uh, the silly season. We'll be into the off-season. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Yes, <laughs> the preseason. I was going to say, I um, do like the preseason. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll cover trade draft. We'll have, I think, a post trade well, period, pre and post draft. By, by our next show next Monday night, which we'll be recording tonight's obviously Sunday. Yeah, but by next Monday night, we may have a first free agency move because free agency opens next Monday. Oh, it does oh, too. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so, so we'll have somebody to cover then. Absolutely, definitely. Um, thanks very much for watching. Sell with the Hawks. Good luck to the Hawks. Good luck to the Swans. <laughs> Uh, it's going to be a cracking day enjoy, on Saturday. Enjoy grand final day. Buddy yeah. versus his old side is going to be massive. It's going to be huge. We'll see you next time. See you later.